Boop. There we go. <laughs> he used to point at me and let me know when I was live. Now he just looks at me and says, you're good. <laughs> so I had no idea the camera was on. Great. Very helpful. You're welcome. Renee. <laughs> I'm going to start calling him by all, both names. Then he'll know just how deep the trouble is. How is everybody? It's been a, an interesting week here in the Moreau household. Uh, I did not get a midweek video done this week. Uh, my husband decided to uh, give us a little scare earlier in the week. So the week has been taken up with uh, doctor's appointments and, and whatnot. But good news, he's fine. He's, you know, the royal pain that he can usually be. But uh, yes, he's fine. So uh, for those of you that were sending me best wishes and your thoughts and your prayers, thank you very much. But uh, yeah, he'll be around to torture me quite a bit longer. So that's out of the way. Uh, we also had a really planned on a really big announcement this weekend, but um, you know what they say about the best laid plans. So uh, that's going to be delayed a little bit. Unfortunately, I was kind of hoping to do it today because we're really excited about this project. But uh, unfortunately, um, things haven't quite come together the way we wanted to. So we'll delay that for another week and hopefully it'll come together then. Uh, we had a giveaway last week. Oh yes, we did. The giveaway was for the pattern for this piece. This is the uh, peppermint tea piece that I taught yesterday in a Zoom class. The pattern is now available, but um, one of you will be getting a print copy of that plus the stencil to complete the piece and that is Carolyn Edwards. Carolyn, if you will message me with your shipping information we will get you your pattern and your stencil out to you as soon as possible. What else? Um, I have quite a few things happening. I've got uh, classes and whatnot coming up and um, one of them is this one's for an event called Up the Creek. And it's a free Zoom class. There's four designers, four separate classes. Each class is about an hour long. And this is the piece that I'm teaching. This is called the Joy. And it's a gift tag and there's some fun techniques in it. Some, a little bit of faux finishing, and some stamping, some stenciling, just a whole bunch of fun stuff in that. So have a look at Up the Creek. You can find it on my Facebook page or you can find it at emeraldcreek.co awesome company. You'll find all of the registration and the information there. You do have to register so that you can join the class, but there is no cost for the class whatsoever. And there's also three other great designs on there that you can participate in. Um, oh yes, 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 yes. I'm also teaching a live class on December 2nd for STP on the STP Academy. We are doing naughty and nice. Uh, these are fun little ornaments. Well, they're not all that little, they're about six inches across. The surface is from Sheila Landry at ToadPaintingDesigns.com. They are just wonderful and they were so much fun to paint. So if you uh, want to check that out, go to the SDP Academy, Society of Decorative Painters Academy and register for that Zoom class. What else? Oh, got lots of fun stuff this week. Uh, but this week I thought we'd have a relaxed time of it so uh, grab a cup of whatever blows your hair back whether it's an adult beverage or a cup of tea or a cup of coffee doesn't matter and today we're going to paint brown eyed Susans I love this piece it's simple it's fun it's got some nice um, little design elements in it that I think you'll enjoy uh, but that does work up fairly quick so I think we're just about ready to get started So this is the piece, this is Brown Eyed Susan. I, I know I paint a lot of daisies and, and like flowers. I really love how these look and I wanted an autumnal color palette and I wanted it to have sort of a country theme. So it's done in two layers. The surface has two pieces to it. There's this background plate and then a foreground plate. And then you, it gives you great dimension which is pretty just by itself, but I thought um, a little visual texture back here, even though you are only seeing about a quarter of an inch of it, it does have great impact visually. So we're going to do this sort of barn board effect in the background, then we're going to do some stenciling and a little antiquing, and then we're going to paint some Brown Eyed Susans. It's not a difficult piece to paint, but it is a lot of fun. So 
We're going to start with that background piece. So I've base coated this just with one coat of lamp black and I need my fugly brush. This is my one inch Dynasty encaustic and I'm going to use a little bit of warm white. Put a little bit of that on my palette. Let's move that out of the way. Wow. So I'm getting that encaustic nice and wet because I want a fair amount of water in it. And I'm going to pick up sort of a milky white, with that warm white. So it needs a fair amount of water in it. And I'm going to drag it across the surface like so. I'm not pressing hard. I want that texture that I see there. If you get too much, you can always go back over it. It doesn't hurt it. But I kind of like that, the irregularities. I like the hysteria, that bit of black showing through. And I do like that it's not quite white. It looks a bit more gray. That will do nicely. So that's going to be the base for our sort of barn board effect. I'm going to do the rolly edge thingy. <laughs> My son in his technical terms. Rolly edge thingy. <laughs> so you can dry this really quick. Oh, and so, you know, when it dries, you get this, this really great soft gray look. I really like that. So now we're going to age this edge a little bit. Age the edge. The rolly thingy. The rolly thingy. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. So I'm going to use a little asphaltum to age this, and I'm just going to float along the edge with a little asphaltum. Neatness doesn't count for this. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. Mary is wondering if they're available on your website. The, the, surface. the surface is available on my website. We do have uh, a few in stock. The pattern, unfortunately, is, is not complete yet. We have to finish that out this afternoon and it'll be up a little later on the website. So I'm just putting a really rough float. Uh, when I say neatness doesn't count, perfection is to be avoided at all costs, I mean it. So I'm just putting that little bit of asphaltum around the edge. Just softens this a little bit, ages it a little bit, so it doesn't look quite so cold and hard. I like the warmth that that asphaltum gives this. Oh, all of the craft sales everywhere have been either canceled or seriously changed. Okay, so I've got my asphaltum in there. And now we're going to do that rolly thing along the edge. It's a brilliant term. <laughs> rolly thing. I like this. It sort of gives it a chippy wood look along it. What would you call it? Chipped paint effect. And that's what we're going to do next. So I've loaded up around with a little bit of lamp black and I thinned it out a little bit with some water. Ashfartum, really? And I'm going, I'm going to roll this brush along the edge very lightly. Narrow, thin, you can push and pull it. I like how this creates sort of that weather distressed edge. Hello Tracy and world's best cameraman. Apparently. World's best cameraman. Don't let that go to his head. Good grief. We'll have to butter his ears to get him out the door. World's best. There we go. So that, I like this sort of chippy wood look. So I'm just rolling that round brush along the edge. All the way around. 
this works up really quick, this piece. I mean, you could do it on any surface, really. You could mask off and do the paper or this, so uh, this would look on almost any surface. I just really like how this one looks with that layer, that extra layer. Now this surface is made by Southern Ridge Trading. Um, Karen Beaupre is the owner. She's uh, based out in, uh, I believe it's Peachland, British Columbia. And her website is chipboard.ca. She has some amazing surfaces and amazing embellishments, lots of chipboard and wood pieces. It's all kinds of cool stuff on her website. She also makes stencils. She makes all kinds of really cool things. So there we go. I've got that chipped paint look around the edges. I'm gonna dry this real quick. There we go. So there's only one more step to this and that's to add a little detail to the edge of that chip, a little highlight actually. So I'm going to do that with some of that thinned white, that warm white, and a liner brush. I know you've seen me do this piece before, this technique before, so I'm using a liner to put a fine white line along that chipped edge, just to highlight that broken paint look. I'm really loving this liner brush. This is a uh, this is the Tenot Extra Long Detail Liner. I've been using this one for the last couple of weeks. I don't often use a liner. I usually tend to drift into a rigger, one of the small riggers, but um, Veronica Tui sent me a brush roll full of these Micron brushes, which I've used before, uh, but for whatever reason, I've just taken to using this long liner because I think it's just got a great point on it and I'm able to do some really tiny detail work with it not to mention it's a comfortable brush in the hand it's uh, that barrel handle it's like holding a pencil or a pen. And so the control is really easy to get that, you know, those tiny, tiny lines and into tight spaces. Very nice. Oh, of me. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Just still waiting to see a picture of you. Yeah. Imagine, if you will, <laughs> a cross between James Bond and the Mountain Man. <laughs> <laughs> James Bond. Well, you know, you, you do clean up nice. Uh, there's only one picture. Uh, yeah, I, I call it your James. Play, yeah, I call it your James Bond shot. James Bond shot. Yeah wearing a tuxedo or a suit with the flowers. One of his friends wedding it. It was a while ago, so <laughs> I think it's the last time he actually dressed up. Dress up every remembrance day. That's true. Oh, <laughs> I'm Yep. So there it is. We've got our background done. So we've done that chipped wood or chipped paint effect around the edges. And I've put on a highlight and if I drop this panel in, look at how that sort of accentuates that orange. It pops up off the surface now. Love how this looks. So next, we have to do some stenciling on this. Is Yes, ma'am. It is tollpaintingdesigns.com. Tollpaintingdesigns.com. So here we go. I'm going to drop this on too. There. Now, I know this is going to shock you. What was the name of the Tenot? The Tenot, this is a Dynasty Micron. It's an extra long detail liner. Love this barrel handle, it's really comfy. So I'm going to use Asphaltum 
over this base color, which by the way is burnt orange on this surface. So I'm going to position my stencil so that it doesn't move around, assuming I can get it there. It doesn't matter, it goes off the surface. So I'm going to hold it in place with my fingers because there's no place to really tape it without doing it. So circular fashion, change directions frequently. This is just asphaltum. I didn't want a really harsh, dark color on there like black or milk chocolate or and bittersweet chocolate or something. I just find those colors a little on the lifeless side. This one stays warm. So just stencil. And I like this buffalo check. This small one looks really nice on these surfaces. It's you know, very festive. It's great for Christmas stuff, for fall, for Thanksgiving. Oh, and there's a good reason to keep you around. Thank you. He brought me a cup of tea. World's yeah, best son, too. <laughs> You're my favorite son. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> You're my only son. I figured. I hope. I don't want to have to go killing another person. Because, you know, brothers are like Highlanders. Are they? Yeah. Okay, there can be only one. It can be only one. <laughs> there, so I've just got a little bit left to do over here. Uh -oh. And what? Oh, oh. Backdoor dealing going on here. Oh. <laughs> so, there we go. Lisa needs to sneak a picture of you and put it on her webpage. She actually had a picture of me on her webpage for the longest time. <laughs> so, there we go. I've got that asphaltum on there. I'm going to check. That looks great. So there is our buffalo check. Now there's a couple of things that I do once I have my stenciling in place. Um, I usually tra trace my line drawing onto it right away. And then I will start detailing this a little bit. So. Lisa's seen a picture of me. <laughs> what? <laughs> So I'm going to age the edges of this little insert with a float of asphaltum all the way around the edges. And again, I don't worry too much about being neat and tidy with this float. It's just aging the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nice and soft. I just want to keep that dark outside edge a little darker than the rest. I know I sound like a broken record sometimes, but having that dark edge brings all of the attention towards the center of this piece, keeps that center nice and light, which draws the eye towards it, which works in our favor for this because we want the attention to go to the flowers or the bulk of it. And having that lighter center draws the eye towards that. Uh, from thought conception to finished painted idea, how long does it take you to come up with it? Uh, sometimes it can be very, very quick. Other times it can be a bit longer. Um, in the case of this one, it actually only took me about an hour and a half to, from design conception until it was actually finished. Because I had a picture in my head and with a little bit of luck and good management, I managed to get precisely what I wanted. It's not always that simple. <laughs> it also depends on how many, also depends on how many um, design elements are in it. In this particular case, a lot of the design process is involved in the, in the surface. So I was creating a design that was going to complement the surface. So when we drop that into place, a large portion of the design process is already complete just doing this. 
so from this point, we're primarily going to concern ourselves with the flowers. Although this is probably the lion's share of the design work is in creating that background so that each of these layers marries and they, they work rather well. So I've got that aging around the outside which keeps the center of this quite light which is going to show off our flowers quite nicely. So I have mine already traced on and I have the first layer of, or I have a layer of gesso on the petals because I'm working with yellow it would take a lot of paint to cover this so I decided to work with a layer of gesso on each of those petals just to keep them nice and bright and to give us good coverage. When I transfer my line drawing before I start painting I float asphaltum around my line drawing in all of the areas where there will be shadows. So in underneath the flowers and along these areas here leaving this area here a little lighter. So it gives us that impact there and then all these bright colors. <laughs> Good cup of tea, thank you. So the color that I'm going to use for these daisies, I'm going to start with, uh, this is sunny day. It's my favorite yellow. It's got a bright sunny tone to it. I think it's the ideal color for flowers like this. I'm going to find a small round. Oh, never mind. I've got a rigger. That'll work. <laughs> so the centers of these flowers are going to be done with asphaltum. Surprise! Who knew? <laughs> so it's essentially just a ragged gumdrop shape. It's a little rough. And again, neatness doesn't really count with this. The brown eyed Susans have sort of a rough center, so we're just going to pop that in. Brown-eyed Susans are a common flower here in late summer and early in the fall. And they're pretty. Such a happy flower. Same with daisies. I love daisies. Your dog is hollow from the neck down. Much like his owner, her owner. <laughs> Miss Dot's feeling much better now. Yeah. She She's just about back to her happy, bouncy self. She's throwing temper tantrums, though. Yeah, it's because mom was cheesing her, teasing her with cheese. Uh. <laughs> it looks like a chocolate kit. It does. It looks like a Hershey's kiss. It does. It won't for long. Everything that you paint always seems to have this extended ugly stage, you know, where everything, nothing seems to be coming together. Getting a lot of subsurface gathering. What happens when paint dries? Yep. It'll be shiny for a little bit. Yep. It'll look weird. So we've got the centers in, and I just noticed something. I missed a stem. This one was just kind of floating there. You have the shaping below the flowers. Yes, I put that float of asphaltum all the way around and underneath here. And at some point we'll deepen it as well. Go. So I've got the centers done. They just have that base of asphaltum in there and now we're going to start adding some color to these petals. Now I 
love that layer of gesso for a couple of reasons. One, it keeps that yellow nice and bright, but it also creates a little bit of texture in the petals, which is what I want. I remember the word stria. Stria, yes. Yeah. Well done, you. Yay! I can go to Oxford now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and you notice when I'm applying my base color to these petals, I apply it in the shape of the petal. So if the petal curves slightly, I curve the stroke so that it fits that petal. And I'm only using one coat of this yellow on these flowers. Facebook's got a new feature, it automatically translates now. Nice. Yeah. So this was written in Portuguese. Good afternoon, sorry I'm late, wonderful project. Thank you, thank you. Oh, nice. You're very welcome. Welcome, welcome. So I follow the length of that petal and the shape of the petal for a couple of reasons. One, any texture that the paint creates is going to follow that shape. And so when we float color over it, it's going to work in our favor. Did you mention the size of the wood piece? The wood piece is six by six inches. And you have an item number. Uh, there's no item number. It's, uh, if you're on the website, um, SRT, you'll find it under I believe it's new products. Well, I thought the surface is from Sheila. No. No? No. Oh, okay. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> the surface is from chipboard.ca at Southern Ridge Trading. Yes. We also have them on my website too. I really like this. This is such a pretty little surface. What's the name of the yellow you're using? Sunny Day is the yellow that I'm using. It's my favorite yellow. It's nice and bright. That one. Has a really nice, uh, nice coverage in one coat for a yellow. Most yellows are notoriously transparent. It helps immensely that I've put that this layer of gesso underneath so that I'm not fighting against that dark background. And as I said, I follow the shape of each of those petals and the, it works very, very well. So if there are any textures or lines in the finish, they're Which going to... Which are you using? I am using a number zero. Uh, but zero a, rigor. a zero rigor or a two will work perfectly for this. In fact, I think the two would probably work a little bit better because it's going to fill more of the space. This just happened to be the one that was closest to hand. Cameraman is having some fun today. I got a good sleep. I'm not sure that that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great thing. It means I didn't have any flares last night. That's true. That is very true. That makes a nice change this week. Yeah. Uh, said it before, I've said it again. You paint with such ease and you explain what you're doing with simplicity that anyone can understand, which equals a wonderful teacher. Aw, that's a nice thing to say. Thank you. I think that the trick to painting something like this is not to fuss too much with it. I'm the queen of overthinking. I will overthink everything. It's true. So, and that includes when I'm design when I'm designing things. I have a tendency to overthink everything. And sometimes that works in my favor and sometimes it doesn't. So, um with things like flowers especially the idea is to simplify them 
and then add detail. Keep them as simple as possible. I just find you end up with a, a happier result, but it will take me hours to figure out how I'm going to do something. So, you know, I'm one of those people, you know, give me half an hour, I have to overthink about it. So, I'm only going to take, I might as well finish up base coating these, but um, <laughs> we got one little one left, and then we'll do the stems. Uh, olive green. Olive green. I am absolutely obsessed with black backgrounds lately. And um, in Christmas colors, I've been using greens and reds, and, and I'm kind of obsessed with Christmas stuff the last couple of weeks, so I've been painting everything from candy canes to gingerbread cookies. A lot. <laughs> and uh, I was designing the, the naughty and nice ornaments, and I got kind of carried away. And, uh, I came up with a couple of other designs along the same, using the same design theme. So I've been having a lot of fun with the, the Christmas thing, but almost everything I've been painting lately has been on a black background. So I wanted something fun, something brighter, and a little warmer. So now I'm going to switch to, I've been using this color a tremendous amount. This is matcha green. Um, unfortunately, matcha green is not as easy to get these days, and it is a new color, so it came out just shortly before all the madness began, so, you know, some people have it and some people don't, and just like the madness. Like the madness. <laughs> so, um, I went through all of my paints to come up with something that would suffice as a replacement, and I uh, decided on olive green. It's just maybe one value, maybe one value out. I don't, I'm not even sure it's that much. So I'm going to paint all of the stems and the leaves with the olive green. Thank you, you're making home, staying home enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> This is fun. You get to connect and chat with people and paint with people and talk about things that matter to us and that's that's important. We're missing all of our social interactions and I think that we have to stay connected somehow. I know for my own sanity that's important and I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I get to do something that I love and I get to share it with some people that love it too. So what could be better? I think it's a great way to spend a Saturday. Spending a little time with my son doing something is, is fun too. Hi. <laughs> well, the design you're speaking of, Christmas, will be on your website. Yes, actually it will be. The Naughty and Nice will not be up until after the class with SDP. Um, but uh, I have another piece <laughs> Sorry. I have another piece that goes along that same line. So this is called Kiss Me Quick. Uh, yeah, it's really zoomed in right now. So. Okay. <laughs> like really zoomed in. This is Kiss Me Quick and it's got you know that that uh, candy cane lettering and the mistletoe and then a little berries and, and leaves around the frame. And this is a pretty surface. Makes a cute little holiday decoration so this pattern will be up on the website shortly too and I got a couple of other fun things that I was working on um, that sort of spun off of the uh, the pieces that I've been working on is this little series of tags and these are fun I think they're they're cute and they're fun to do so there's a set of six. This is only three of the six, but there's a set of six in the pattern. And they're just a simple little two and a half by three and a half inch tag. Since you don't want to keep it in shot. And, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> I thought I'd zoom out a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is also coming up soon. So these are really fun little tags. I'm in, like I said, a little obsessed with, with the whole Christmas thing <laughs> of late. Oh, you just get a girl. Okay, I'll leave it alone. <laughs> Jesus, bossy. I'm not being bossy. <laughs> so, um, I've got two colors. Now, ordinarily, I tend to dip into my fluid acrylics, but I know that they're very difficult to get right now. So, I've been kind of trying to utilize my regular Americanas as much as possible for these. And then try to find some. Uh, Can you get those tags at Hobby Lobby? Yes, they're just a standard size gift tag. You get that tape measure over there? Just quickly measure these things. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're just a simple, basic tag. They're. Oh, it's two inches by four inches. So. I, they came in a pack of, I think, six, five or six. And then um, I just called up one of my favorite wood companies and had them send me a bunch of wooden ones because, you know, I ran out of the other ones real quick. So. Is that the rest of the pack? Yep. Yeah. So you did three or four? Oh, no, these are the ones from Stockade. Oh, these are from Stockade. Yep. Yeah. So if you're looking for these, if you're in Canada and you're looking for these little two by four inch tags, I got these ones at stockade.ca. They are fantastic. Because I didn't have any more of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, stockade.ca has these. Viking Woodcrafts also has these, so you can find them on their website. And they're just a simple little tag. They have them that type available at Hobby Lobby as well. And at Joann's, you can find them anywhere. So now we're going to start a little bit of shading on our... When is the date for the naughty and nice class? I believe it is December 2nd. And is it with SDP? Yes, it is on the SDP Academy. Oh, there you go. Yep. And the first are not available. So I'm going to, ordinarily I would use quinacridone gold to shade these, um, but because they're so difficult to get, I am using a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm, I'm using a very small amount and blending it out well. And this is my shading color. I take that burnt sienna up close to the center, underneath those petals. I keep moving out of the shot again. That's your shading color. I like that little bit of sienna at the top and underneath the petals. I try not to make this color too strong because it is quite opaque compared to the fluid acrylics, so I'm using it very sparingly. Oh, nice. Thank you. I do appreciate that. And it is going to be fun. And as usual, I always have little extras uh, in, tucked into things. So yes, there will be little bonuses in the class. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. Uh, Susan is wondering, can I download this video once I've purchased a pattern? It'll be free on YouTube. It'll be on my YouTube channel. You'll be able to watch it at your leisure anytime you want. So I'm just floating in a little bit of that burnt sienna to, oops, a little strong there. It will be hard to get those tags here in Spain, I think. Aw. Well, in the pattern packet, we have the, the outline for the tag itself. You can always cut them out of watercolor paper or heavy cardstock. That cut will, the wood yourself. Or cut the wood yourself if you have the ability to do that. 
they are a very small tag. They're not, it's not a big elaborate surface, so it is an easy one to replicate. And I like to have the shape of the surface in my patterns. It makes things easier for people. If they aren't able to actually get the surface, then they can you know, find a way to create one on their own. And most of my designs are easily adapted to other surfaces anyhow. I try not to make them so reliant on a given surface. So I'm just about done with this shading. I'm going to tuck that in there, like so. Shade that last little petal. There's one tucked under there. I'm going to put a wash of sienna over top of that. And now I'm going to start putting some shading to create that texture in those petals. It's a weak float. Oof, not too strong. Sponge. I am not using my sponge today. That means you're floating well. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Why do I have it in my head? You'll float. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just putting a little bit of a shadow down the center vein on these flowers just a little just to create a little extra dimension in those petals and I'm going to uh, thank you for letting us Canadians know where we can purchase supplies in Canada shipping fees and money conversions to buy in the United States can be quite expensive yes they can yep yeah. uh, sometimes we don't really have a choice but whenever we do stockade is a fantastic resource for us Canadians um, same with country bear woodcrafts country bear is an absolutely fantastic uh, surface supplier as well as paint and your brushes and um, all kinds of other things I mean they have fabulous fabulous products they're based in Sherbrooke Quebec so if you're looking for a supplier in the eastern part of the country they're out of this world. Southern Ridge Trading is based in um, Peachland, British Columbia. She's got fantastic resources on her website as well. What color was that? Was that just a Schwalten? Or? Uh, the shading on the flowers is burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. So now I have all of that burnt sienna in. I'm going to come up and I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. And again, I'm going to, I don't like to use colorful strength, so I'm going to blend that out very well. And I'm going to put a little float of white just at the tips of these petals. Are the six pack ornaments out now, or do we have to wait until after you're in the class? The six pack, that's these little tags, those will be out in, tomorrow. Yeah. So just a little bit of white on these ornaments just a little and I'm keeping that white close to the tip of the of the petals and on the highlight side of that petal just like that I don't need a ton of it I just need a little so I'm not uh, not fussing too much thinking about moving to Canada so I can purchase all those products <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can get them all in, in the States um, a lot of them, the Southern Ridge Trading stuff, you can't. There we go. Okay, so I've got that white, that little bit of white on there. So, I ordinarily, I use that diarilla yellow, which is that school bus, that hot, hot school bus yellow this one right here and again it's in the media fluid acrylic so I was looking for a good substitution and I found this one saffron yellow it's not as transparent as the diarylide but we do have a saffron yellow. saffron yellow it's a brilliant yellow 
little all actually has a touch of orange in it. So again, I'm going to saffron is purple. Saffron is orange. So I'm going to put a wash of that brilliant yellow over top of everything. Now I did thin it out quite a bit so that I don't have that saffron is orange. Purple. Mm -mm. The flower it comes from is purple. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> purple. We should never have let this guy near Google. So a little wash of that saffron yellow over top of everything. <laughs> so a little wash of that saffron over top of all of that color gives us that rich, warm tone, but it also gives us all kinds of depth because it changes that burnt sienna too, not just the yellow. You can get all kinds of warmth and it softens a few things too. It takes some of the harshness out of those shadows and gives us that nice, rich, buttery, warm yellow, like so. It's that ooh-ah moment. I love how all the colors jump when you do that. So now we have to create some texture in the, these centers of these flowers. And that is actually done with a little bit of buttermilk. I've got light buttermilk here. No, no, paint color. If I can ever get it out of the bottle. There we go. So I'm going to, where's my other angle? I've got a nice half inch angle here. Good and wet. And I'm going to double load this brush. So I'm going to pick up Asphaltum on the heel and a little bit of the light buttermilk on the toe of the brush. And I'm going to blend that really well, like so, until those two colors meet. And I think I've got the wrong size brush. Of course you do. <laughs> Too big. I need a smaller brush. Ah, there we go, three eighths. The three eighths will do the trick. A lot of people mentioning Paint for Joy. Paint for Joy is based in St. Albert, Alberta. Carol is the owner out there. She's got a great little shop in St. Albert. Well, so you know exactly who that is. I do indeed. I know Carol well. Okay, so I've got my brush double loaded. Now this is a chisel blend. This is where I stand the brush up on its chisel edge. And it's a quick tap and a pull all around the edge of that flower like so till I get to the point. Watching your work on your palette is very helpful. Good. So, good. <laughs> Why we put it there? Yep. So I'm putting a tap and pull motion just to create a little texture on that side of the flower. And I'm going to do that to all of them. You see that little tap and pull? It's not filling in everything, but it creates a little bit of texture at the edge of that flower. And it's giving us our highlight at the same time. So there's our texture. Tap, 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 tap. There we go. And I'm going to come down and do this one. Buddy's dog just got out of surgery. Oh. The boxer cross. Aw. He's got the cone of shame. shame. <laughs> so. He had a peach pit. Aw, poor baby. Got stuck. Aw. My son has a. loves puppies, by the way. 
Love dogs. He loves dogs. <laughs> and he is actually a certified dog trainer. I think my puppy's asleep, actually. Yeah, Miss Dot, I think, is asleep. So we are planning an event that's going to have quite a bit to do with, with puppies and dogs. And uh, so we're kind of hoping it all comes together this week. Um, things didn't quite come together as quickly as we wanted to for this week, but um, we will. Okay, so I have lots of texture and highlights on my centers. And I'm going to do the same thing this time, but I'm going to put lamp black on the heel of the brush and asphaltum on the toe of the brush. And I'm going to blend those two colors together. And this is the shaded side of our flower. Just like that. And we're going to do the same thing on each one of those. I had a little too much black in there, so it got a little harsh, but that's okay. I'm going to remember to turn my brush a little. There we go. And that little bit of asphaltum on that brush keeps it from getting too, too black and too harsh. <laughs> so there we go. We've got our shading side done. Just got a couple more things to do and then we'll be off to the races. So next we have to do those leaves and the stem and I'm working with a little bit of plantation pine. Ordinarily I use sap green out of the fluid acrylics but we'll work with the plantation pine. It will do what we need it to do. So for the leaves, I like to put just a float of the dark green at the base, like so. And it helps create a shadow and it gives that shape at the same time. So it's just a little float of plantation pine at the base of that leaf. Just like that. You notice I use angled shaders quite a bit. When I'm working on a textured surface or one that requires a lot of, of paint, I tend to pick up my faux squirrel brushes because I like how much paint they hold. I also like how well they work over textured surfaces and rough surfaces. When I'm working on something smooth like this MDF, I, I really like the sharp edge of these black gold. These brushes are fantastic for working on surfaces, especially smooth surfaces like this one. So I'm just putting a shadow on our stems up underneath our flowers like so. And it's just a small float just to separate those stems from the background. What can you use if you don't have plantation pine? You can, if you don't have plantation pine, you can use uh, dark forest green or black forest green, or you could use black green. You just need a very dark green. And I tend to lean towards one that's a little more transparent because I like the look of it. So I tend to go to the plantation pine, but a nice dark green will work just fine. So we've got our shadows in. You don't have to highlight this in such a small area and that green that we used for the base is nice and bright so you don't really have to highlight them. I do add what I call fussy work after the fact so we're going to start doing all of that fussy work right now. I know. So and part of that fussy work is doing some of these highlighted details on the <laughs> on these flowers. I do that with dip dots. I just, I like dip dots. I have a thing for dip dots. 
and I like to make sure that they come out onto the petals just a little. They're small and sporadic and they come off the center. I don't, don't keep them just tightly in the middle. If you stay within the confines of that flower shape, it looks tight and controlled and we don't really want that. And it doesn't look very soft and we want these to look kind of soft and fluffy. So let's keep it soft and fluffy. And I'm going to do the same thing on each one of these flowers. Notice I very, I, well, not very rarely, I don't ever use a stylus. I just, I've never gotten into the habit. <laughs> I like this nice loose bit. I like when the dots are different sizes. I would love to know where I can find your pattern. <laughs> That's actually really easy to answer. I'll give you the website. Yep. So just a light touch. Uh, I don't worry about, you know, meticulous, making sure they're all the same size. This just actually works much better if they're not. You know, keeps them soft and light. <laughs> Kathy who? Oh, <laughs> sorry, wrong window. <laughs> <laughs> These are fun. This is just a really fun piece to do. It's, you know, no sign, no nothing. It's just the bright sunny flowers. Oh, we will, Nancy. We'll show it right at the end. What's that? Oh, they want to see the... The finished piece? Yeah, they want yeah. to see the finished piece. Well, this one's going to be finished. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like these. I like the just the loose little dots. It just adds a little texture. Keeps the flowers nice and soft. And fun. So our centers are done. Yeah. There's the finished one. I, I overshot the wrong one. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little of that olive green that we used for the leaves and the stems. And I'm going to I'm going to do these curly cues here, these little vines and tendrils. I do like that. And I don't know if she's talking to me or you. Uh, Your voice is so calm and relaxing. Definitely not mine. <laughs> and then just these light, fine lines. And again, that's where I break out that long liner. I do like this long liner quite a bit. I don't worry about getting things utterly perfect. And I do like loose lines. The other thing I like doing to leaves especially, I like to put a soft squiggly line around the outside edge of them. It just gives them a little softness so they don't look quite so stiff and they give you a little dimension like so easy peasy so we're almost there we've only got two more things to do well three now I like using my gel pen I'm kind of obsessed with this thing I really do like this pen I like putting little squiggly lines and any like minutia, little tiny details. It just, it hardens the edge without hardening it. It creates a little detail and dimension and shape without making them too harsh. And you can do this with a liner brush if you want to, but I prefer to do it with, with that black gel pen. This is a Uniball Signo. I know somebody's going to ask, so. Yeah. Uh, it gets asked every time. It gets asked every time. It's a Uniball Signo. It's a Japanese ink that's in this, so it's very, very black. And when it comes time to finish things, like putting varnish and whatnot on, um, I simply take my ornament pieces out to the garage and I spray them with uh, matte spray 
just to seal them in. It just prevents any potential. Although I have varnished over this ink with no issues in the past, I just prefer to set it. And somebody asked. Of course. <laughs> what brand is the gel pen? <laughs> it is. This is a Uniball Signo. Um, there's a couple of good reasons for using it, uh, uh, the ink aside, with that nice black ink. But one of the best things is that this one is a stainless steel ball. And so it moves very easily over top of acrylic paint without any issues. I don't find that it sticks or jams up or drags. It works very, very nicely over that. But it's also, it is a very fine point. It's a 0 0.38. This is them. Yeah. Made by Mitsubishi. Yep, they're made by Mitsubishi. <laughs> <laughs> so they go fast. They go fast. But these are fantastic. They work well on paper. They work well on painted surfaces. I just, I really like this pen. It works for me. And I like that sketchy line. I use these quite a bit. I use them on a lot of different things. So I just like how it looks. So all of those little, you know, sketchy stuff that you want to put in, you can do that with this pen. And because it's so fine, you can do really tiny detail with it, which is fantastic. So we're almost there. I just want to finish off a couple of things with that. And we have two more things to do. You know I can't resist spattering anything. I love spatter. <laughs> so I'm just using a coarse bristle brush. What? No nails? No nails today. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just putting a light spatter of buttermilk, light buttermilk on my surface. Very light. I'm not putting a ton on. Just a little. The glue is in the bin up there. And so the only thing I have left for this piece is to add that gold border. You know, I love to finish things nicely. So I'm going to use, this is that, uh, this one is from Craftsmart. I got this one at Michael's. Um, but I usually use the Sheeta one, which is this one here, a deco color. This is the premium one. Um, they're about the same price, both the Craft Smart and the, the Deco Color. I think they run about ten dollars. Uh, the Deco Color you can get from Amazon, and I like to take that gold paint pen and just put a nice gold border all along the edges, like so. I do like gold borders on things. I also think that this finishes the edges very nicely. And a lot of the time, I think edges are one of those things that we just neglect. But I also really like that little sparkle, that little bit of gold on this. I think it works very well. Did I miss you painting the tendrils? You did miss painting the tendrils. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our flowers done. We have our background done. And when it comes to putting this on, I'm using a little Aileen's tacky glue to put this in the middle. If I can ever get it out of the... It's great stuff, but it doesn't come out of the bottle easily. I'm just putting a smear of it in the center, like so. And I gotta get my... <laughs> in the drawer over there, there's some of those clamp paper clips. No, no, in the white drawer. Yeah. That'll do. So um, I've got a little of that Aileen's tacky glue in the center. And I'm going to drop that into the middle. Now I'm lining it up with those two holes at the top and then come down, just roughly center it got lots of glue in it and then I take two of these and clamp it into place to allow it to dry. I think it is a 
It's a UM151. UM151. So that's how I get that in there. I usually use two, I can't find the other one. Um, just clip it into place until that glue dries. Glue bottle. And the glue bottle is Aileen's Clear Gel Tacky Glue. Tacky Great stuff. And then, there is your finished piece. What is the Naughty or Nice one? The Naughty or Nice is the, um, these two ornaments. I'm gonna leave that there while this one dries. So these two ornaments are being taught in the Naughty and Nice workshop on STP Academy. This is a Zoom class on December 2nd. And on December 5th is the Joy Tag class, and that one is on the Up the Creek event. And that one is on December 5th. You'll find links for both of those um, later today on my website. So there we have it, gang. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. It's having computer issues today. <laughs> so that is Brown Eyed Susan's. Everything today. It's, uh, it is a fun piece to paint and it's very simple. It's not elaborate. It is a very simple piece to paint, but it is a lot of fun. And what can possibly be bad about a happy flower? So that is it for today. We do have a giveaway. I do have a very nice giveaway, as a matter of fact. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. Southern Ridge Trading was the sponsor for today's uh, live, and they gave us this fabulous wood sleigh canvas right off of their website. This is a great little wood piece. One of you is going to win that. So don't forget to uh, leave a comment in the comment section and hit the share button, and you'll automatically get entered into the drawing for that great little sled. I have a new design coming up for that piece as well in the next little bit because I'm kind of obsessed with Christmas these days. So thanks guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it and um, I'll see you next Saturday. We have a fun one planned for next Saturday. It's going to be a Christmas one. Who knew? Surprise, surprise. <laughs> we'll have something for the holidays for next Saturday's class. So don't forget to join us every Saturday 1 p.m. on Tracy Morrow Live. The class is free. Bring your friends. Bring a glass of whatever blows your hair back. Sit back and enjoy the day. Scotch. <laughs> Scotch in the middle of the day? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you again so much for being here and sharing your time with me. I really do appreciate it. Love ya. Stay safe.